You know what they say about backups? They're a bit like insurance policies. You never think you're going to need one until that day that your SD card decides to take an unscheduled vacation to digital heaven or digital hell. I'm not sure which one's <laughs> it's going to head to. And much like insurance policies, the best time to make a backup was yesterday. But the second best time is right now. And whether your custom firmware is running perfectly smoothly or you're about to embark on some dangerous tinkering that could turn your card into an expensive coaster, a kind of tiny little coaster for rodents and squirrels and things like that, this video is going to show you how to create the perfect clone of your SD card setup. Now, I've seen people try to do this just by copying and pasting files like they're moving their holiday photos around. Well, that often doesn't work because you've got different partitions on a card. So that's going to be as effective as trying to photocopy a car and expect it to drive. Well, today we're going to do this properly, creating a sector by sector image that captures everything, including all of those hidden partitions that make your custom firmware tick. The process is actually pretty straightforward, though I will say this up front you're going to want to use a new SD card that is the same size as your original. Trying to squeeze a 64 gig image onto a 32 gig card is like trying to fit into jeans from your college days. It is technically possible. Well, it may be technically possible, it's just not worth the headache. You'll need a couple of tools before we start, and you'll find links to everything in the description below. First up is Win32 Disk Imager for creating your backup image. You'll also need Rufus, we've talked about Rufus before, which we'll use to restore the image to your card. And obviously, you'll need that spare SD card as well. Make sure you've got everything downloaded and installed, and I'll see you after this. Right, let's get started with backing up your original SD card. The first thing you'll need to do is insert your SD card into your computer, and now comes the slightly tricky bit. This is probably the most difficult bit of the whole process. So you do this, everything else is a piece of cake. We need to identify which drive is actually your SD card, and we need to do this as safely as possible so you don't lose any data. So you're going to open up Disk Management by right-clicking on your Windows Start button and selecting Disk Management from the menu. In the window that opens, look at the bottom section where you'll see all of your drives laid out. You're looking for the one that says Removable and matches the size of your SD card. By and large, this is often the one that's right at the bottom of your list with all of the partitions on. You might see a drive letter like E or F next to one of the partitions on the card. If you do, that is great. You're ready to go. If there's no drive letter showing, which is common with some custom firmware types, don't panic. Just right click on any of the partitions on that SD card and choose Change Drive Letter and Paths then click Add, and then you just let Windows assign whatever letter it suggests. We only need this temporarily, so any letter will do. And once you've got that sorted, fire up Win32 Disk Manager. In the image file box, you need to tell it where you're going to save your backup. So click the little blue folder, navigate to somewhere sensible. I'm going to put this on my desktop and then type a file name for your backup. I mean, you could use anything you want, but something, you know, my.backup.img. Make sure it's got IMG on the end. Uh, in the device dropdown, you choose the drive letter that we've just identified and double check this, the program's going to read everything from whatever drive you select. So make sure you're absolutely sure it's your SD card and not your main hard drive. And once you're confident that you've got the right drive selected, click the read button and then go and make yourself a cup of tea. The program will chug away, creating a perfect copy of every single bit of your SD card. And this took me about 25 minutes for a 64 gigabyte card. When this is done, you can safely remove your original card and then close down Win32. Now, technically, you can do this next bit in Win32 as well, but I prefer to do this in Rufus. So insert your new SD card into the computer and then open up Rufus. And the first thing to do is make sure you've selected the right device in the drop down at the top. Again, double, triple check this because Rufus is going to completely wipe whatever you select. Verify this is the right card by checking the size and drive letter. And then under the boot system, click the select button and navigate to wherever you saved your backup image. Choose your .img file and then click 
open. Leave everything else exactly as it is. Rufus knows what it's doing. Click Start and you'll get a warning message that data on the device will be destroyed. Well, that's perfectly fine because that's what we want to happen. Take one final look to make sure everything is correct and then click OK. Rufus will now write your backup image onto the new card and this creates an exact clone of your original setup, complete with all of the partitions and every single file exactly where it should be. Again, this is going to take roughly the same time to copy as it did to extract. When the progress bar shows ready and the little noise goes off if it does for you, then you're done. And you can remove the card, pop it into your device and your handheld should boot up exactly like it would do if it had the original card on. And now you've got a perfect backup of that card you can use if anything goes wrong with your main card. One important thing to remember, your new card should really be the same size as the original. Trying to use a smaller card won't work, but using a larger card is going to leave a bunch of unallocated space on your card that is a pain to deal with. It's not easy to expand that unallocated space and merge it with another partition, although it is technically possible. For this tutorial, we're only focusing on direct copying and not expanding your SD card. If there is enough interest, I may make another video on that later on. And there you have it, your SD card is now safely backed up and you've got a perfect clone ready to go. This whole process might seem like overkill when everything's working fine, but trust me, you'll be grateful for it the first time that something goes wrong. The beauty of having a backup like this is that you can experiment with confidence. If you want to try different settings, if you want to install new firmware, you just go for it knowing that you've got your perfectly working setup safely stored away. Remember, a backup you don't have is just regret waiting to happen. So if this video helped you get your card properly backed up, then please do give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments how you go on. And then thanks for watching and may your SD cards live long and prosper. Happy gaming.